Now, in the very early morning of November 25th of last year, a 737 on approach to Vilnius' airport runway 19 crashed, impacting the ground around 2 kilometers in front of the runway. And now, months later, the Lithuanian Transport Accident and Incident Investigation Bureau has published a report on the cause of this crash pointing out human error as the main cause. And let me tell you, this crash has recently been on my mind now because of the stupid reason it happened. Today, let's go ahead and analyze this flight and see how it could have been prevented. Now, it is nearly 3 a.m. at the Leipzig airport here in Germany, and the crew prepares for this two and a half hour flight from Leipzig to Vilnius. We're on board the 737-400, a 31-year-old airplane with the registration Mike Foxtrot Echo. Now, yes, indeed, this is an older airplane, an older 737 that doesn't really fly for passengers, at least in Europe anymore. But it turns out the age of this aircraft has no matter to the cause of this crash. And it could have easily happened on a newer model of the 737 indeed. Either way, the plane departs from runway 26 left of the Leipzig airport to embark on this flight. Now jumping forward to the approach into Vilnius, here we are at 5.20 local time, everything on the flight radar looks normal. This plane is not flying a standardized star arrival or anything, but judging from flight radar tracking, everything is fine up until the approach, where the 737 is flying in, reducing speed for landing of course, but for some reason shortly before landing loses lift at 150 knots. But did you notice something? Because I did. Can you see this? This plane is not landing with any flaps extended. That's kind of the first thing that investigators found out in the wreckage. The wreckage is quite large. One pilot out of the four crew was killed, with the three other crew members having been taken to hospital care. And so the big research for the investigators were, why were the flaps not out? And now for two weeks, we've known why. Now, of course, flaps were properly set on the approach. Pilots did not forget about that. But the reason why the 737 did not actually put out flaps on the wing is not because of a mechanical issue, but because of a huge pilot error. As it now has turned out, the captain accidentally disabled the flaps system by clicking the wrong switch. And this part almost confuses me. Let's jump back to around 13 minutes before the crash, where this fatal error happens. The crew is descending through 18,000 feet for landing, and because of the weather conditions, the pilots decide to turn on the anti-icing. Yes, at the moment, it's snowy in Vilnius, it's winter, it's cloudy. Yes, a humid atmosphere where ice really builds up on your wing and your engines, which is why the captain decides to reach up to the top panel where the engine anti-ice and the wing anti-ice switch is. But apparently, the pilot doesn't turn on the anti-icing, but turns off the hydraulics B system of the airplane, the switch right beneath it. Now I know this whole video is a bit rich coming from someone who's not an airline pilot and not a 737 pilot like me, but it is true. In my experience, it is a bit easy to confuse these two switches. They have the same feel. And apparently, according to some 737 pilots, this kind of sometimes happens. Where I would even say, hmm, Boeing, maybe this whole hydraulics panel should be better protected from accidentally turning it off by, for example, adding a two-way switch, you know, with a cover on. But, you know, my confusion isn't even about that, accidentally turning this off. It's rather about the fact that turning on the engine anti-ice is obviously the other switch direction from turning off the hydraulic pumps. So in terms of muscle memory, I have no idea what went wrong in that cockpit for the pilot to not only switch the wrong switch, but also not notice that he's switching the other way, 
to the off position. I think you know what I mean here. But as I said, usually turning off these hydraulic pumps or accidentally doesn't immediately cause death. So let's see what happens now. As in real life, we're descending, we've got the autopilot B on, and let's turn off those hydraulic pumps. There you go. Boom both of them. And what happens now is that we've got a master caution light as well as the autopilot having been disengaged. It says hydraulics on this panel, it says flight control on this panel. The airplane is not liking that we turned off the hydraulic pumps and it warns us of that. Now the proper thing to do would be to realize the big low pressure light here and recycle the hydraulic pumps, which makes all the errors go away, pressure builds up again. But in real life, they decided to click away the warning light as well as the autopilot and hand fly the airplane. They made the attempts to re-engage the autopilot B, but they were unsuccessful, obviously. Now, just because you turn off the B system of the hydraulics of the 737, the plane doesn't just fall out of the skies, and it didn't. The system B essentially does part of the flight spoilers, the autopilot B, which is why it disengaged. It also does the yaw damper, which is why we had a flight control warning, but most importantly, the trailing edge flaps, which is exactly the reason why it didn't come out. Now, I really don't get how this error was recognized over the next 13 minutes of flight. The captain did recognize that the autopilot was disconnected about the same time as he attempted to engage the anti-ice switches, but that point was no further discussed by the crew. During the approach, the co-pilot asked whether the anti-ice is on, and the captain confirmed, even though the anti-ice switch was obviously off, and it wasn't lighting up. There is no blue light there. So you might even say the captain didn't even look up to check because he would have definitely noticed those red lights showing, uh oh, hydraulics are on. And even minutes later, when the captain wanted flaps five, they didn't see that the flaps was still in the up position. In fact, the co-pilot only realized 12 seconds before crash that something was off. Co-pilot recognized that flaps are retracted. Immediately after the stick shaker activated, syncrate pull-up warning was triggered by the enhanced ground proximity warning system. Six seconds before crash, the crew called for go around. Throttle was set to go around mode and the engine accelerated to full power at impact. Now, the sheer amount of mistakes that happened on this flight is just insane. Here's, by the way, an original picture of the wreckage that was found. We can clearly see the hydraulic pumps be off, as well as the anti ice. Reading through the incident report really makes you worried. With a crew that made lots of air traffic communication errors, with a crew dialing in the wrong frequency of the Vilnius approach air traffic controller, or reading back the wrong frequency of the Vilnius airport frequency, to the point where they didn't even talk to the Vilnius airport tower because they tentered in the wrong frequency. It's riddled with little mistakes. Now, it's clear that some sort of pilot fatigue caused these errors. The captain of the flight had overall 5,000 hours. 1,200 were on board the 737. That's definitely enough. While the co-pilot was relatively new, only having 520 flight hours, of which only 190 were made on the 737. This will be something that will have to be investigated further. Why these pilots pilots managed the airplane so poorly, especially considering that over the last 24 hours prior to the accident, both crew did not fly a lot, only one hour and 20. So we're not talking about an overworked flight crew or an untrained flight crew at all. I mean, they had their last simulator training on the 5th of September 2024, just three months earlier. We'll have to see how that goes. I think what we can all learn from this crash, though, is that when you switch something in no matter what type of aircraft, you point at the switch, you look at the switch, and visually confirm that it's the right switch to switch. And perhaps in pilot training, there should be a bigger emphasis on this accidental wrong switch switch on the hydraulic pumps. So really that is my analysis of the Swift Air Flight QY5960. Please take this whole video with a grain of salt because I'm technically not quite qualified to talk about the crash in the way I did. So if you're a real 737 pilot or any pilot of some sort, please comment your thoughts on this. And so thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night.